She should have died hereafter. There would have been a time for such a word. Tomorrow, and tomorrow, and tomorrow. Creeps in this petty pace from day to day to the last syllable of recorded time. And all our yesterdays <coughs> blinded fools. The way to dusty death. 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 Out, out, brief candle. Life's but a walking shadow. A poor player that struts and frets his hour upon the stage, and then is heard no more. It is a tale told by an idiot, full of sound and fury, signifying nothing. Wild in their attire, 
against the use of nature. Present fears are less than horrible imaginings. My thought, whose murder yet is but fantastical, shakes so my single state of man that function is smothered in surmise. And nothing is but what is not. If chance will have me king, then chance may crown me without my stir. himself 
husband's breast and take my milk for gall, you murdering ministers, wherever in your sightless substances you wait on nature's mischief. Come, thick night, and pall thee in the dunnest smoke of hell, that my keen knife see not the wound it makes, nor heaven peep through the blanket of the dark to cry, hold, hold. Great gloms, worthy Cardor, greater than both by the alpha of the after. Thy letters have transported me beyond this ignorant present, and I feel now the future of the instant. My dearest love, Duncan comes here tonight. And when goes hence? Tomorrow, as he purposes. Oh, never shall the sun that morrow see. Your face, my thane, is as a book where men may read strange matters. To beguile the time, look like the time. Your welcome in your eye, your hand, your tongue. Look like the innocent flower, but be the serpent under it. He that's coming must be provided for. And you shall put this night's great business into my dispatch, which shall to all our nights and days to come give solely sovereign sway and master them. We will speak further. Only look up clear. To alter favor ever is to fear. Leave all the rest to me. This castle hath a pleasant seat. The air sweetly and nimbly recommends itself unto our gentle senses. Heaven's breath smells wooingly here, and knows that the air is delicate. See, see, our honored hostess, the love that follows us sometimes is our trouble which still we thank his love. Herein I teach you how you shall bid God yield us for your pain and thank us for your trouble. All our service in every point twice done and then done double. Give me your hand, conduct me to my host. We love him highly and shall continue our graces towards him. By your leave, hostess. If it were done when tis done, then twere well it were done quickly. The assassination could but trammel up the consequence and catch with his surcease success that but this blow might be the be all and the end all. Here, but here upon the bank and shoal of time, we jump the like to come. But in these cases, we still have judgment here that we do but teach bloody instructions, which being taught return to plague the inventor. This even handed justice commends the ingredients of our poisoned chalice to our own lips. He's here in double trust. First, as I am his kinsman and his subject, strong both against the deed, and then as his host, who should against his murderer shut the door, not, not bear the knife myself. Besides, this, this Duncan had borne his faculties so meek, so had been so clear in his great office, that his virtues will plead like angels, trumpet tongued against the deep damnation of his taking off, and Pity, like a naked newborn babe striding the blast, or heaven's cherubim, horsed upon the sightless couriers of the air, shall blow the horrid deed in every eye that tears shall drown the wind. I have no spur to prick the sides of my intent, but only vaulting ambition which overleaps itself and falls on the other. How now, what news? He has almost sucked. Why have you left the chamber? Have he asked for me? No, you not, he has. We will go no further in this business. We have all of you late. And I've got golden opinions from all sorts of people. And I shall now be warned that newest gloss are cast aside so soon. <laughs> Was the hope drunk wherein you dressed yourself? Hast it slept since? And makes it now to look so green and pale at what it did so freely? From this time such I count thy look. Art thou a fear to be the same in thine own act and valor as thou art in, in desire? desire? Wouldst thou have that? Which thou esteemest the ornament of life, and let a coward in thine own esteem, let him I dare not wait upon I, I would, like the poor cat, be the adage. Prithee, peace, I dare to all that become a man, who dares be more as none. What beast was then that made you bring this enterprise to me? When you durst do it, then you were a man, and to be more than what you were, you would be, be so much more the man. We should fail. We fail. But a screw your courage to the sinking place and will not fail. I am settled. Is this a dagger which 
I see before me, the handle towards my hand? Come, and be clutch thee. I have thee not, and yet I see thee still. Art thou fatal vision, such as feeling as a sight? Art thou dagger of the mind, false creation proceeding from the heat of the brain? I see thee still in form as palpable as that which now I draw. Thou marshals me the way that I was going, and such an instrument I was to use. Mine eyes are made the fools of the other senses, I was worth all the rest. I see thee still, and on thy blade, dungeon gouts of blood, which was not so before. There's no such thing! It's the bloody business which forms thus to mine eyes. Now over the one half world, nature seems dead. Wicked dreams do abuse the curtain sweep. Witchcraft celebrates pale Hecate's offerings, and withered murder, alarmed by his sense of the ghost, whose house is watched thus with a stealthy pace. Tarkin's roushing side towards his design moves like a ghost. Thou sure and firm set earth here not the way I walk, for fear thy very stones prate on my whereabout, and take the present horror from the time. I thread he lives, whereas the heat of deeds to cold breath gives. I go, and it is done. The, the bell, bell invites me. me. Hear it not, Duncan, for it is a knell that summons thee to heaven or to hell. That which hath made them drunk hath made me bold. What hath quenched them hath given me fire. <laughs> Didst thou not hear a noise? I heard the owl scream and the crickets cry. Did not you speak? When? Now. So I descended? I. Hark, who lies in the second chamber? Donald Bain. This is a sorry sight. A foolish thought to say sorry sight. There's one did laugh and sleep, and one cried murder, that they did wake each other. I stood and heard them, but they did say their prayers, and I trust them again to sleep. There are two lodged together. One cried, God bless us, all men the other, as they had seen me with these hangman's hands. Listening their fears, I could not say amen when they did say God bless us. Consider it not so deeply. Go get some water and wash this filthy witness from your hands. Why did you bring the daggers from the place? They must lie there. Go carry them and smear them with blood. I'll go no more. And firm a purpose, give me the dagger. Drink is 
especially provoked. Mary, sir, nose painting, sleep, and urine. <laughs>
Wait, again! My royal lord! You do not give cheer? The feast is sold! Sweet a moment, sir. Now, help, good digestion, and now, plant and help, long bow. May it please your majesty to sit? Here have we now our country's honor root. What? The person of our bankroll present. Who I may challenge for unkindness and pity for mischance. His absence, sir, lays blame upon his promise. Please your highness to grace us with your royal company. The table's full. Here's a place reserved, sir. Where? Here, my good lord! Ah! Ah! What is the hoops, your highness? Which of you have done this? What, my good lord? Thou canst not say I did. Never shake thy glory and locks at me. Gentlemen, rise! His Highness is not well. Worthy friends, keep seat. My lord is often thus, and I am from his youth. This bit is momentary. Upon the thought, he will be well again. Upon it, quit my sight, and then purify thee. Thy bones are marrows, and thy blood is cold. Thou hast no speculation in those eyes, and thou dost bear with. Think of this but as a thing of custom. Tis no other. Only it spoils the pleasure of the time. What man dare I dare approach thou like a rugged Russian bear? Hard right like nostrils is the hyper tiger. Take any shape of that, and my firm nerves shall never tremble. Hence, horror shadow under a longer head! I am a man again! Pray you, sit still. <laughs> Blood, they say. Blood without blood. Stones have been known to move and trees to speak. Tomorrow I will, and the times I will. But to the weird sisters. Oh, 
under you, though I vow which you profess. However, you come to know it. Answer me. Speak. Scott. 
put him within reach of my blade. If he escapes, heaven forgive him too. Our powers are ready. Our lack is nothing but our leave. And the powers of put on their instruments. Receive what cheer you may. The night is long that never finds the day. <laughs> She go now to bed. Directly. How whisperings are abroad. Unnatural leaves do breed unnatural troubles. Infected minds to their death pillows will discharge their secrets. More nature the divine than the physician. God, God, forgive us all. Look after her, remove from her the means of all annoyance, but still keep eyes upon her. So, good night. My mind she has made it and amazed my sight. I think, but dare not speak. shadow, a poor player that struts and frets his hour upon the stage and then is heard no more. It is a tale told by an idiot, full of sound and fury, signifying nothing. Thou comest to use thy tongue, thy message quickly. Gracious, my lord. What 
Say, sir. As I did stand my watch upon the hill, I looked toward Burnham, and anon methought the wood began to move. Ring the alarm bell! Blow, wind, come wreck! At least we'll die with harness on our back! Scotland. Hail, King of Scotland! 